Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the 3D Game Engine tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be making the final changes to our whole lighting system so that we have the proper architecture, so it's fully integrated with our one-half engine, one-half scene graph system. And that means, well, it doesn't mean a lot at this point. We've done most of the work by having the base light system, where we have an active light and everything's a base light. But there's still a few sort of oddities in here. For one, in our point light... Wait, that's, that's a shader. Wrong class. <laughs> Let's close everything else. Let's go to the point light class. Right here, we have the con... No, not the intensity. The constant float and exponent. That's great, but that's a lot of parameters. It's really just more compact to put it in as a vector 3f. So I'll say vector 3f attenuation. And so there. So this dot attenuation, I'm going to have a vector, private vector 3 for that. Attenuation. So this dot attenuation equals attenuation, there. And for getting constant and whatnot, I'll just return attenuation.getx. For linear, I'll return attenuation.gety. Yeah? And for exponent, I'll return attenuation.getz. There. And for set constant, I'm going to say this dot attenuation dot set x to the constant. So yeah, minor changes, but you know, they're there. This dot attenuation dot set y, there. So yeah, nothing fancy, we're just wrapping everything in a vector class. There. Dot set z to the exponent. And there. So now, we have that. It's all part of that, and everything should run almost okay. Actually, Spotlight's going to break it, because it's inherited and whatnot. Yeah, didn't think that would work out so well. But that's okay, because you can just replace, and there you go. So, and super with attenuation. Oh, I deleted the wrong parameters. Color intensity and attenuation. And I can have it. I'm just screwing up the parameters all over the place. Okay, there. Float intensity and there. Now it should run. Or I can forget to actually, you know, change this code. I'm going to take new vector 3f of that. Very simple. Change it back to a vector 3f. And there. Well, actually it was attenuation before, but you get the idea. And there. Works just fine. Just like before. And it also looks like this has solved yeah, some of the fading conundrum I was experiencing earlier. So great! Don't... I think I'm just not noticing it, but, you know, I'm not noticing it as much now, so I guess that's a good thing. But anyways, the really big thing I want to change is with position. So... Can I say get transform? No. Okay. This is where I'm going to need to change game component a bit. Because... Yeah, the transform, we're going to need to know about that in some way or the other. And it, yeah. What can I say? You need to know about it some way. And it's just, it's. I, I don't know what to tell you. It's just not going to work out. Just by doing this. So. Well, or, <laughs> or I could do some more bizarre heroics. To, so you know, here I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna do some bizarre things to work around this, just because, well. Because, 
Actually, I'm not going to make it part of point line. I'm going to make it part of base light, whatever that is. So it's going to have private transform transform. And the way it's going to get that is by... Has IntelliJ stopped recognizing my keyboard again? Dak nabbit. And I thought about this while I was <laughs> rebooting IntelliJ, and yeah, this really isn't going to work. My whole improvised transform as a parameter system. So yeah, I'm going to have to change this back and have a private transform transform or private game object parent rather yeah it's and i can say well public void get transform which is just going to return parent dot get transform there and, oh it returns a transform <laughs> yeah it's not the most beautiful solution in the world but oh well and also, public void set parent takes in some game object parent. And this dot parent equals parent. Oh well, it was improvised code anyways. You, you can only expect so much out of it. So, yeah. Anyways, now, I can get rid of this extra transform parameter into everything. It's gonna change a couple things, at least. And now when I add component, I'm just going to say component.setParent to this. And just like that. It's that simple. Now I should achieve the same effect, just maybe not quite in the same way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the position parameter entirely. In fact, I'm going to get rid of the get and set position things as well. And I'm going to close out some of the giant list of things that I don't need right now. Just a few of them. There. And what I'm going to do... Oh yeah, and in Spotlight too, we don't need a position. And also, I'm actually also going to get rid of the range parameter while I'm here, because I really just... I can calculate that, I should say. For now, I'm going to set it to a thousand, so just something ridiculous that's going to always work, but to do calculate, because I can calculate exactly when, well, exactly what the range should be. So yeah, and that should be everything. So all I should have to do now is change some of this code, point and spot, because that's not going to work. So instead I'll say pointlight.get transform dot get position or pause good and I should be able to do the same thing in spot wherever I'm doing that here we go and if all is gone according to plan oh and I should be able to get rid of this I think that's a parameter I want to yeah these are the parameters I want to get rid of so get rid of these and get rid of these. Yeah. And if I did everything correctly, then what my positions of the spot and point lights should be based on the the transform of the object they're part of. Render method does not override. That's okay, just delete that. And I don't and I just need to change this to get transform. There. Wonderful. Everything should work out just fine. Hopefully. Yeah, okay, there we go. And now they're at zero, 00, the origin. But, hey, what I should be able to do is something very interesting. Or at least I think is very interesting. I should be able to say... I don't know. Spotlight object dot get transform dot set pass to 505. I don't know, making it up. And... It should move, based on the tr object transform. But yeah, see? Now its position is based on the position of its parent, and not some arbitrary separate position. So there. The position is part of the game object, and not the light. Which is good. That's exactly what I want to go for. That's pretty good integration with the scene graph. 
At least I think so. Okay, so all I really want to do now is get rid of, or calculate the range properly. So first off, I'm going to get rid of the base light stuff, because I don't really need that. And there. And I also added this back in, just because I think it's nice. I want to make sure I didn't break anything, so I'm going to run. And excellent. Now, now just so you know, event actually pretty soon, I'm going to be changing the transform thing here a little bit, so that, or, well, spotlight a little bit, so that we don't have to pass in the direction. The direction's going to be based on the rotation of the transform. I'm not going to do that yet, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> so, that's just another future thing I'm going to do. I just wanted to let you know. I haven't forgotten about that. I just want to wait until I do some more stuff with the transform class. But anyways, back to calculating the range. Really, this is pretty simple. Attenuation acts like the sort of a quadratic equation. We have some exponential amount, some linear constant, some... Con yeah, constant, constant. So what I can do is I can say float a equals attenuation dot get x b attenuation dot get y maybe you'll see what I'm doing and c attenuation dot get z see see the thing now a b and c just like in the quadratic formula so that's really the secret here I'm just going to use the quadratic formula and that's going to allow me to ac accurately calculate the range based on the attenuation really the only trick to this is being able to find when zero is, when is the cutoff point, when is the light no longer affecting the pixel. And the, we're going to need to, we're going to calculate this from the color depth. So I'm going to have some private, sure, static, final, yeah, int, sure. I'll call it color depth, which is going to equal 256, because there's 256 colors. And what I'm going to say is C is going to equal color depth. Whoops. Well, I, I'm not actually going to assign it to color depth, but I'm going to do some calculation, but you'll see. So C minus equals the color depth for now. You'll see. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to multiply this by the intensity of the base light, or of this, I guess, so that get intensity, and I'm going to multiply this by whatever the greatest component of color is, because that's going to also affect how much color we can possibly get out of. If it's only 0 0.1 color and 0 0.8 intensity, then there's only 0 0.08 maximum value here. So I'm actually going to add a function to my vector3f class, wherever that is, under core. I'm going to call it, yeah, sure, public, hmm, I'll put it up here with dot, sure, public float, I'll call it max, it's just going to, ret going to return whichever component's the highest, so it's going to return math.max of x and math.max of y and z, and it's that simple. And I'm going to do something similar for vector 2f while I'm here. Don't need it here, but I might as well. I'm going to return math.max of x and y. Sure. And there. So, and, yeah. Get color dot max. And there we go. That's at least gives us sort of a numerical representation of how much, well, how much color this light can possibly contribute. And really, now that we have this, and now that we've subtracted it from the constant, this will give us, well, well, once we subtract, okay. First off, let me just move this whole thing here. So C equals th this minus our equation. And now that we've subtracted, effectively, the maximum amount of color depth that could possibly affect it, or that the light could possibly affect, that's given us the constant in the whole quadratic equation. So, oh, 
you know, the point where it could equal zero. And really, all we have to do now is plug this into the quadratic formula, and we're done. So, yeah. And since we have a, b, and c, it's just like you know. Negative b plus 4 times a times... Wait. <gasps> no. <laughs> I skipped a whole bunch of steps, sorry. Plus math dot square root of b times b, which is b squared, minus 4 times a times c. And then this whole thing over 2 times a. And there. Then I just want to cast this to a float. And just like that, it's done. We have, now that we've plugged it into the quadratic equation, this will give us the, a prop, the proper range it, where this whole light stops affecting things. And yeah, we only care about plus here because we want the positive part of it. And just because of the nature of the sort of constant we ha have in here where nothing except C should be negative, well, plus is always going to be the right answer in this case. Unless you really are doing something weird with, like, negative attenuation, but you're not supposed to do that. So, yeah. Unfortunately, this will cause a slight bug as it is. And I just got these reversed. Remember, x is the constant of the attenuation, z is the exponent. So if I do the calculation correctly, then I get reasonable values. So, for example, this can only possibly affect at a maximum distance of 10, which is reasonable and makes sense. So there. And you see, none of the light, all the light, well, the whole range is perfectly bounded. We've calculated the exact bounds of, well, the light. That's great. That's exactly what we were going for. So we've calculated exactly when the light is going to run out by using the quadratic formula from all this. So yeah, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time where we're finally done with lights. We should, unless I've missed something horrible and minus the spotlight direction thing, this should be all the stuff we need for our lighting system. So in the next video, we're going to start working on the transform system. We're going to make better transformations. We're going to make it so you can have, like, parent transformations where you specify position rotation not relative to the center of the world, but relative to other objects in the world. So you can say this is always five units away from this object or something like that. And, yeah, stuff, stuff like that. We're going to make rotations based on quaternion so we don't have a gimbal lock and whatnot in our transforms. Haven't really run into it, but it's an issue. And, yeah. So hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time.